A revelation. The one thing I always remember is keep your left leg on the touchline, you said to me, as a left winger. And another thing you always said, take him on. Take him on, take him on. Never once did he say, you shouldn't have done that, you should have passed the ball. It was always, take him on. And that's all he was trying to get me to do. I enjoyed every bit of time I had in football. When I was lucky, I played in good time. Everybody was happy, enjoyed it. Quick, knew where the goal was. Like to go around goalkeepers. Yeah, played it really. I grew up in a little place called Fulton, a very tiny village. Got to about 14 or so, 13 or 14, and then football suddenly came on the horizon. I'd been kicking the thing around for all my life anyway, but got in the Somerset schoolboys team. Scouts came along from Swindon, Bristol City, and watched me play, and um, Bert Head, who actually ended up signing me for Crystal Palace, was manager of Swindon at the time. He came down, picked my dad up, took him to the game, Britt brought me back in the car with him, had the forms in his car, signed the forms, and an hour later the Bristol City manager came along and he wanted to sign me as well. So it's a bit lucky for me that he was an hour late, so I never did what I did. I was very lucky the way it happened. As a 15-year-old, I was really frightened of him anyway. If he said something to me, I would do it, you know. But one thing I always remember is keep your left leg on the touchline, he said to me as a left winger. And another thing he always said, take him on, take him on, take him on. Never once did he say, you shouldn't have done that, you should have passed the ball. It was always, take him on. And that's all he was trying to get me to do. Well, outside lefts in, we're supposed to uh, stay wide, get the ball, go past your fullback and get the crosses into the box for everybody else to score. You know, which is very, sounds very easy and all that. But that was what my, basically my job was. And it, it took me about five years before I realised I could score myself. <laughs> Well, I loved it, but the great thing for me was that when I, the ball received the ball, I got a great big cheer. I could, I could hear that when the ball was coming to me, the cheer in the stand and all that. And if I didn't get much of the ball, they'd be shouting out, you know, get out to, you know, so that it, did, it was good for your ego. So this is Don Rogers Sports Shop. So tell us about when you opened this for the first time. Right, um, well, I opened it in 1st of April, 1968. April Fool's Day, so we'd never forget what day it was. Um, and uh, it was absolutely brilliant for us because March 1969, Swindon won the League Cup final at Wembley. So for the first year of this shop being open, I mean, it was like everybody was in here, wanted to come and buy something. So it's a shame we didn't know what we were doing because we would have been OK, really, but we didn't. We had no idea what we were doing when we first opened. Instead of ordering 10s and 12s, we were ordering 1s and 2s. Selling out of everything. Selling out the same day. It was ridiculous, you know, but, but it, was, it was a brilliant time. Was it a bit of a wrench to leave after such a long time at Swindon, so many good memories? No, no not really. I was looking forward to going playing in London and in the First Division. It's a huge opportunity, wasn't it? Oh, it was for me, yeah, yeah. And so initially you were living in Swindon? And travelling every day, yeah, which is not the best thing to do. Oh, it's brilliant. It's brilliant having this because um, uh, so many people come and say hello, and have, you know, it's not only customers; they're, they're friends more than customers. A lot of people now, and it's it's always nice to talk to sports people because most of them are nice people. Then they're, they're doing a good job for kids and teams, and they've all got the right thing at heart, you know. So it's yeah, it's nice to belong running a sports shop. Perfect. Well, it should be wonder over here yeah. because I've noticed these. I think these bright yellow boots would have been a bit different from the ones. <laughs> That's one thing that I, I can played. guarantee you I wouldn't have gone out in yeah. I did when I was playing. Uh, the Georgie Best brought out a side lacing, purple, and black boot, and I got given a pair by Stylo who made them. 
I said, well, I'll wear them in training, but I don't wear them on the gate ground, I can assure you of that. What were your first impressions of Palace as a club compared to Swindon? So I'd say they were a very, friend, very friendly club, everybody. It's great. I, was, I loved it there, I did. Everybody was friendly. You, two or three bars, we used to go in after the game and speak to everybody. Uh, yeah, it's, it's just, it was a bigger version of Swindon, I thought. Well, the first thing I found out, which was brilliant, I went to go in the dressing room to get ready for training. And I've got the gears there ready to put on, obviously. And I came back from training, and of course, we used to do our own washing, <laughs> training, and everybody was throwing it on the floor. And I thought, what's going on here then? So I thought, this is great. We don't have to wash our own training gear. That's one thing I remember from the start. Completely different. And you can't be any luckier than what I was, scoring the only goal and winning 1 0. I mean, that's, that's a dream start. That means everybody loves you straight away, doesn't they? The Everton game, of course, program is, I've got that because that was my first game for Palace, so I'm glad I've got that. Um, brings a lot of good bells to me, that one. There we are, what it is that? Does. Yeah, it brings back a lot of, a lot of good memories, that. And if you just flip it on the back, there's the... Yeah, and I can... The trademark Don Rogers look as well. Yeah, OK. <laughs> Number 11. <laughs> can go over long here, crook. first game I played Everton came off the pitch in the dressing room and all of a sudden I saw Mel Blythe had a hairdryer with him. I thought, what? what? Drying his hair? The hairdryer. Never seen it in my life. You know, but that, that's what he was like. And that wasn't usual in those days? No, not at all. No, no. Tell us about when the um, trademark moustache and hair came <laughs> into play. I don't really remember, to be honest with you. I suddenly ended up with it and it was there. Um, I don't know when it actually happened. I look at myself and other things. That me? Um, no, it's just a thing that happened. To be honest with you, and I just kept it. And my wife would not let me. I shaved my moustache off once, and she cried for about two days. She said, oh, "Grow it back." So I've never shaved it off since. Obviously, something that you were always chasing throughout your career as well. Well, as a, as a pro footballer, you don't you win hardly anything. You don't get trophies. That's something you don't get because you only play for the League Championship, the FA Cup and the League Cup and you're going to win them very often. So, I mean, the kids nowadays, I mean, they've got trophies coming out of their ears now. From the age of six, seven, eight and all, they all get trophies for everything they compete in and they unbelievable what they get now. Because you didn't get a medal for the League Cup, did you? No, we just got, we got a nice pewter tankard. That's all we had, yeah. And was that, would you have preferred a... No, I think Tanka look, probably looks better, actually. Well, we should have a look at there's a few things. Yeah, this is something, yeah. That he's managed to keep. This is an impressive looking... Well, that's something I'm really, I was really pleased about. And then when they asked me to go back, I think it was about 10, 12, 15 years ago, something like that, to go back and I was going to get an award. So, And when I got there and found out it was a special achievement award, I was really chuffed about that. I think that must be the Man United game that did that, I think. Yeah. <laughs> It pushed you over the line. Yeah, I think it did, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's it, yeah. yeah it was, it was the, this is the first goal coming up, I can remember this. Inside the fullback, Ali Mulligan. I know he got it in from there, but he did. That was the start of it. I remember the shirts now looking at this. Yes, I'm just, oh, it's the second goal now. Yeah, of course it is. Yeah, roll it inside to Paddy Mulligan. I don't know what the goalkeeper was doing, but there you go. I don't, I don't think that should have gone in, really. So 2 0 up at half time. 2 0 up at half time, yeah. Yeah, because that was a great feeling anyway, being that 2 0 up. And then I guess the second half was all about you, wasn't it? The... Yeah, I did enjoy the second half, yeah. So I think, yeah, it was, this is the first goal. Yeah, this is, I really remember this one. I really always feel good when I watch that goal. That's something special, that one. I think he talks about, the commentator talks about doing a Pele, doesn't he? Yeah, it doesn't happen very often you see goals like that, does it? It's a good comparison. And this is Alan Whittle's goal, I can remember this. Because I was moaning at him, he should have given me the ball. I can remember that. Could have had your hat trick. But it's a great, it, 
This is a great goal, this one. Good goal. I like how calm I was there, really. I quite difficult. Jeff watching that. There wasn't much room to put the ball in. It was great, it was a great feeling that. After the game, it was great. I always remember because there was a, when we went in one of the bars, there was a bottle of champagne and two glasses on. Just waiting for you on the yeah, bar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I always remember that. It's almost Brilliant. appreciated. How yeah, yeah. Somebody left it there for us. It's, it's great for the fans, I thought, you know, because the Palace had never done anything like that in all the time in the first division, had they? With along with the League Cup final, it's win than that would be. That's probably my best overall game I've ever played, I would think. But, you know, if I'm feeling a bit, I'll put that on my phone if I can get on the phone <laughs> and watch eight minutes of that, and that makes me feel really good. Yeah, that'll never go away, that game. I've mean, had a lot of people over the years come in the shop from Crystal Palace fans, lots of them, and they all, they all bring this up. Is Every the, one of them. Is that the game that you get asked about most, that game? Easily, yeah, by a mile. It's just famous, this one. Oh yeah, that's it, oh yeah. That's, I didn't realise that. I never got such a good view of this before. I never knew I was that far. <laughs> I'm really chuffed about that. Yeah, that's a really good goal. But when I got voted goal of the season, I was told by um, the people that were doing the voting, that we were choosing it, one of the papers in London, he said, I didn't mean to do what I did. And I thought, you cheeky, sorry. I thought to put it over the keeper like I just meant to put it, and he, he sort of said, I didn't mean to do that. And I thought, what are you talking about? Was that a big honour then, winning, winning goal of the oh, season? Oh, it was, because there's a lot of good people in for that goal, you know, I didn't I remember getting a phone call, you know, people were somebody telling me, I, and I thought, oh, cry. Have you got any black, just plain black Joma shorts and socks? Yeah. Large? Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah. I'm more moked up here, so I yeah, can't no, move. No, no, you're fine, you're right, I'll come back. Can you pop back later? Yeah. Yeah, all right, Al. All right, mate. I'll see you later, yeah. all right. Thank you. <laughs> He's the old Speedway manager. Oh, crikey, yeah, the pitches were really... Nearly every pitch you played on one was muddy. Well, I found it suited me, actually, because I could get my feet out of the ground somehow, you know, I could run with the ball and just suited my style of play. For some reason, I don't, I'd love to play on the county ground now, because it's immaculate. Well, I was going to say, to play on today's oh, pitches. It's beautiful, Run, running on the top of the ground instead of in it, it'd be lovely. <laughs> Your kit might have stayed the same colour as well. well my mind did anyway. <laughs> I was famed for that. I get comments on that all the time now because my kit never got dirty. It's never on the floor. And if Crystal Palace have a run, you know, and get into the top of the second division and into the first division, you know, they'll have 45,000 people there. With Malcolm's period, he was... I loved talking to Malcolm. I spoke to... I had lots of conversations with Malcolm. All he wanted people to do was play football. That's all he wanted to do. From back to front and... The only thing I didn't like him was he left me at the team at Manchester United when we played them away. And, he did it for a reason, he said, just to annoy me. So I never forgot that. I didn't play there. <laughs> but apart from that, he was really good. He was, he was really good with me, yeah. Palace again in the throes of a desperate relegation struggle. With all the motivation they need, with a new manager they need to prove themselves to him, with 20th position in the first division. I remember because there was a lot of home games we were, we were due at the end of the season. I thought, oh, well, it should be all right now. And I don't think we've won one of them. If we'd have won one or two of those, we'd have stayed up, you know, but you get, you get relegated for one reason, don't you? Because you're not good enough. I'd gone there one season in Division 1, that was it. But I did enjoy it. <laughs> I don't know whether I better tell you what the reason was why I left. <laughs> um, I had a bad hip when I was at Crystal Palace. And the uh, surgeon at Harley Street said, you should pack up plane now. 
He said, I know you won't because it's not hurting you at the moment, but you have got a bad hip. And um, it's quite a funny story, really. I mean, I think Crystal Palace sold me because my hip was worse than Terry Venable's ankle. They need Evan's knee because I swapped for those two. <laughs> he said, your hip's worse than their ankle and knee. So <laughs> that's what happened. Well, I've had three now, three new joints in my left leg. And the last one, I don't want another one like that because it lasted for 16 hours in total, two lots of eight hours, isn't it? It wasn't very nice. I think it's like most people say, most footballers say after they've finished it, they miss being in the dressing room. Training, and the training was as good as the games, really, because training, you have a laugh and a joke and all that, you know, but I think that's the main thing, is the dressing room. You get 12 or 14 blokes together all the time, you get to know one another, it's, it's hilarious. Did you ever struggle in those first few years when you had to make that change? No, I, not really, no, because I always had hiss here anyway, so, but no, I didn't struggle, not really, not at all. Well, I enjoyed every bit of time I had in football. When I was lucky, I played in good time. Everybody was happy, enjoyed it. I was lucky. But what about Don Rogers? A revelation, his performance yesterday. I don't think I've seen a more exciting performance all season from one player. And Don Rogers make it 2-0.